Hi guys, welcome back. So, I totally meant to upload this video last week, but, you know, life happens and so apparently do colds. So, here I am, <clears throat> finally kind of feeling on the mend. Um, wanted to talk to you guys today about a subject that's been on my mind a lot lately, and I didn't really know how to approach it, but last week, um... I was, well, I follow Morgan Daimler on Facebook, and she posted a comment thread, uh, it was pretty interesting, about what priesthood means to you. And there was a lot of love on the comments, but there was also a lot of, <laughs> well, let's just say a little bit of animosity in there as well. And that gets right at the heart of something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and that is what I like to call service-oriented priesthood. And so, just to kind of lead into this subject, you know, most of us today who are practicing paganism and working for deities like Morrigan, um, we're not exactly second-generation pagans, or third, or even fourth. Like, this is not something that we were born into. This is something that we, well for the lack of a better word, you know, we've more or less been converted into it either, you know, by lifestyle choices or by personal choices or by friends and family, you know, we've all come to this path later in life. This is not typically something that, you know, people today are born into. And unfortunately, because that's the case, a lot of us are coming from backgrounds with religions other than paganism where we've suffered a substantial amount of abuse and neglect at the hands of clergy, especially Christian clergy. And there's no secret about this, no beating around the bush. Everybody knows about the scandals. Everybody knows the jokes about the Catholic priests. So this is not something that's like new to anybody, but it's new in the fact that I think we are just now, as a community, really realizing that there's a desire, because there's more of us now than we really ever thought that there would be, um, there's a desire to have more continuity among us. And there have been a lot of fights breaking out on social media and in public platforms, Pantheacon especially this year. Guys, it's going to be crazy. Like, we wish that there was this continuity, this standard across the board. And as much as we hate the idea of clergy, that's essentially what they do, is they provide some kind of continuity and keep things stable across the boundaries between the sex. And now, this is where we find the problem, is up until now... And ever since the, the neo-pagan sort of revival happening mid-century, you know, priests have more or less, priests and priestesses, we'll, we'll throw that out there for gender inclusivity, but the clergy of paganism has specifically been more or less a ritualistic kind of position. You know, we need somebody who takes place in these big high ritual events to stand in for deity. And that's essentially what the clergy has been up until now. But in the last, I want to say, 10 years or so, I think we've all kind of noticed the change happening in the climate where more and more people are rising into the ranks of priesthood. And as such, you know, with more becoming ordained or ordaining themselves, you know, we're finding there's a lot of, re there's a good reason why we're <laughs> a bit wary of these people who are claiming to be priests and priesthood and all this stuff. We don't trust them because they have a tendency to abuse power. Which is where I hope that this sort of sparks a tone with people across boundaries of the different religious paths everywhere in paganism underneath the umbrella is that we really need 
more priests and priestesses. We need clergy who are devoted to an essence of service oriented priesthood. We are here. And I think of this personally with the vows that I took to Morrigan when I did three years ago, just about three years ago, you know, I'm here in service. I'm not here to be the, the pretty lady in the nice and shiny robes who stands up next to the altar and does all the fun ritual shit while everybody else just kind of chants along. Like, that's part of a function of priesthood, but that's not what priesthood is or should be. Priesthood is about service, and it's a twofold service. And this does not mean that you are a carpet for anybody to walk all over. This is not, you know that you are putting yourself in a position to be taken advantage of. This is about creating a bridge between deity and mortal. This is about you are in service to a god or a goddess, something, deity, higher power, universe, whatever you want to call it. You are in service to them, giving them a voice piece on this physical plane. That is what you're here for to do for them. But on the other side, you are here to serve the people that that deity would connect to. So in essence, anybody who, like me, is a part of a Morrigan priesthood, we not only serve Morrigan and serve her purposes and her causes, but we also serve anybody who would be willing to work with her. Which is why I think it's so important that we have these conversations in the community. Because we're not here to tell each other how to live. We're not here to, you know, make sure what another is doing something appropriate as per, you know, tradition necessarily. We're here to serve. We're here to educate and we're here to be a part of that bridge to connect people who are searching for deity to that deity. In my case, Morrigan. I'm here to help people in this physical world to find a way to connect to her specifically. And that is an exceptionally humble place to be. It is not a high and mighty spot. It's not glamorous. It's not pretty. In a lot of cases, it can get pretty brutal and very ugly. All of you out there who have had, you know, personal experiences with her, no, she doesn't play soft, and so I, as her priestess, cannot play soft with her people who would work with her. So it can get nasty and hard, and you have to set yourself aside and your glory and your passion and trying to look awesome in the middle of a ritual. Like, sometimes that doesn't happen. And that's not the point of it. You, you facilitate for ritual, yes, but you're here to provide a bridge between the people and the deity. And that so much is missing. So much of that is missing in our community, guys. Like, we're basically a community of solitaries. We've all been hurt before and messed up by these clergy before them and before us, you know. And we're just looking for a way to connect in a lot of cases, people who are approaching a sense of wanting to take vows of priesthood are really just looking for a devotional. They're looking for connection. They're looking for a way to not feel so isolated from deity, which is, it's a major problem being mortal. You know, we're all human and we are by essence not divine. So finding a way to connect to the divine can be brutal. And so we may claim... And I'm, I was guilty of this at the beginning, you know, claim to be something that we're not in search of a relationship, but you cannot facilitate without that relationship. The relationship always comes first and that keeps you honest. That keeps you straight. And that's why I have very little faith in these people in the community. They're being outed for their intolerance, their disrespect their straight up hatred, their self glorification. You know, these people don't have a right relationship. And we need more of those relationships being brought into places like priesthoods 
going into the future. Because the more of us there are, the more we're going to want that continuity. The more the, we're going to want to be able to share and have a sort of shared experience together. Something that we can bond over together as a community and really build, you know, together on those experiences. We're not going to have that continuity unless we have people to facilitate and those people are becoming our priests. And so I want to give a shout out to all of you out there watching this who are doing the work, who have taken vows of clergyhood and priesthood, who are taking themselves very seriously and who are keeping humble and keeping that relationship right. Because the future is made by you. The future is really made by us. And I don't say that with any kind of pride. I say that with great humility. I say that not from a place of wanting to make myself look bigger than I am because I am a servant. And everything I do is service-oriented, which is why I'm offering, you know, on this page, on this Patreon here, you know, I give my psychic services, which is the one thing that I started with on my path forever ago. I believe very much that the Morrigan is a diviner and a sorceress and a practitioner of the art herself. And so anybody who follows in that path should be well-versed in those and able to provide that to the people. That's why we have oracles at all of our temples. That's why when, you know, we provide services and retreats, we have oracles who present her, you know, voice at that retreat. Divination is very important. I do also provide some Reiki services, which I know completely different side of the world. Reiki to me is a form, I know it's going to sound silly. It's a form of spiritual martial art. It is an initiatory tradition, very much like karate, kung fu, or kendo. It, it's something that you have to be brought into by a lineage. And in that sense, doing combat with forces within a person and helping them to win the battle, so to speak, that's what Reiki is about. And that's why I chose to add that to a service that I could give to the community. That's why I provide that as well. Um, and all of these things that we do that we accumulate random or eclectic as they may seem should quote unquote should um, in essence they all fit with what Morgan herself stands for she stands for healing and truth but she also stands for kick ass and pull you out pull your head out of your ass and fix your shit and help you fly right because without that you're not going to survive on the battlefield she is all about that battlefield inside outside every battlefield imaginable that is what she's about and i think part of that battlefield that exists now and part of the service that we can render on that battlefield has a great deal to do with our social climate it's changing and so people, like it or not, I'm going to get political. I'm going to get really intense with some beliefs here that you may or may not feel belong in religion, but they belong in belief. And to me, they are every bit a part of my practice as anything else, as tarot reading is, you know? And so as a part of that service that we render to facilitate and to be the bridge. We need to be supporting those social changes and those social battles. One of the greatest that's happening now is the reclamation of Ireland. And I, I support native speakers. I support native artists. I support Irish lore masters. I follow the best of the best, and I will straight up put it out there, Laura O'Brien is the best lore master right now in the world. She is the Morrigan's lore master. And you cannot be a priestess of this particular deity without supporting this woman in Ireland right now, because she is on the forefront of this battle fighting for the social change. 
and try as you may, and we'll probably get into this later, change her about, give her different hair color. The Morgan is Irish. She is Irish. You cannot support an Irish deity or any of her camaraderie within that pantheon without supporting the Irish social revolution. Because that is her battle. So check yourself for that. Find local artisans, support them. Find local lore masters, support them. Give them whatever it is that you can, whether it's a blast on social media, reviews of their work, buying their stuff, taking their classes, closing your mouth and sitting at the back of the classroom and saying, thank you so much for doing this. You have my support. You know, if you have nothing else but your time and your voice, say, hey, look at this person. Like I'm saying right now, I am not a lore master and I probably never will be. I'm a single priestess out here doing fuck all in Utah. I am an American and I am not Irish by lineage or any other approach. I will support these people who are working at the forefront of the Morrigan's battle there. And I think as a challenge to you out there in the Morrigan community, anybody who supports these Irish gods, you need to be a part of this. And we need to support them. They require everything that we can give them. So anything you can give would be more than enough. And that's why I'm adding as a goal here on our page, my Patreon, uh, I want to reach a $500 donation goal. I know it's small right now, and hopefully we'll break that thing apart. But I want to give a $500 donation to Laura to support the work that she's doing. I also am putting up a financial goal to support the Koru Priesthood. They do facilitate and have done amazing work here in the U.S. They also support native speakers and artisans in Ireland. And they are actually, in the next year, supporting a uh, pilgrimage. There we go. Pilgrimage to the holy sites in Ireland. Specifically, some that are dedicated to the Morrigan, but a lot to do with the Pantheon in general. So if we can support them for creating awareness, I want to reach out and do another $500 goal for them. So $500 for Laura, $500 for the Kordu Kathboda Priesthood. Let's see if we can do this, right? Let's all be a part of this service-oriented priesthood. Whether you're ordained or not, this is a part of our community. And the only way it's going to get better is if we give to it. So I'm going to end my rant there. We're running close to 20 minutes now. Y'all have been listening to me, but this is such an important subject. And I thank you for making it all the way through this and being a part of this conversation. Definitely comment below. Let's spread this around. Share with anybody that you can. Let's really make this go viral and make it a demand for people in our community to have service-oriented priests. We need to hold each other to a higher standard because we all deserve better. So that being said... I'm going to put links to my Patreon below. I would be more than honored if you would help me donate to the cause of supporting Irish, the Irish lore masters, Laura O'Brien, and for helping us to support our own United States native priesthood, the Koru Kefboto priesthood. They're also running their fundraiser right now, which I will be putting in the links as well. I am an avid supporter and will be going, <laughs> yay, to their wonderful... Uh, Morgan's Hearth Retreat here in August. So we'll probably do a video on that when it comes up as well, if they, you know, are cool with it. But anyway, that's all from me for now. Um, I'm going to be uploading a couple more videos here soon. Again, we're going to get political, so bear with me. I love you guys, and stick with it out there in the front lines. Be awesome. <laughs>